Hello. Um, so uh, I have a lot of slides. I really hope it works. Because if it doesn't, I'm just going to stand here and look stupid. So anyway, um, oh wait, that's not the right one. Oh, anyway, my company is uh, called Quaker City Mercantile. We are in Philadelphia, and I make booze. I create spirits brands for a living. And um, just real quickly, a few that I've done is uh, Sailor Jerry Rum, which is 92 proof, uh, spiced rum. Um, it's, uh, we sell about a million cases a year of this. It's the fastest growing spice drum in America. We're now in uh, 21 countries. It's based on the, uh, it's got a real rock and roll vibe. It's based on the uh, tattoo art of Norman Sailor Jerry Collins. Um, and it's a whole lifestyle brand. It's uh, very rock and roll. And um, the other brand I'm well known for is Hendrix Gin, which is um, a artisanal craft gin infused with rose petals and cucumbers. Um, we are in 71 countries around the world with this, and uh, this is a huge success. It's been, um, if you go into any decent bar in America, uh, or the world at this point, if they don't have Hendrix gin, it's a, it's a crappy bar. Um, <laughs> so I'll just go through, like, you know, this, this has been a very successful brand. Well, um, a few years ago, get to it, I, have, I had what I would call my what the fudge moment. Um, one of those moments where you really question what you do for a living and how am I going to explain this to my kids. Uh, I was in a liquor store uh, walking through the vodka aisle and I came across this. Um, I can't show you the bottle because uh, the TED people were very clear about not getting sued. Um, <laughs> but it was birthday cake vodka. And, uh, and I was like, what? How can you make a vodka flavored like birthday cake? As I walked down the aisle, I saw this, Fruit Loop flavored vodka. And I'm, I'm not making this up. I mean Fruit Loops with milk. Um, there's a gummy bear flavored vodka. And even a pancake flavored vodka. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a ton of these. And I really thought, like, how is this not for kids? This is terrible. It's evil. It's pure evil. I'm sure. The guy who created this, I actually know him, is sitting on his boat somewhere. He's a billionaire. Um, but not only is it for kids, it's, it's pure crap. It's like drinking a Twinkie. No, no better than a Twinkie. It's, it's made with chemicals and crappy neutral grain spirit. It's not even really vodka. Uh, well, actually, Twinkie flavored vodka would be a good one, too. I don't know if they have one of those. I'm going to call him after, after I'm done this. I'm sure he won't talk to me anymore and tell him about Twinkie flavored vodka. Um, but my reaction to this was repulsion. Um, I guess other people might follow the lead and, and try to cash in on that as well. But instead, I created this. Um, it's a brand called Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction. Root, Snap, Rhubarb Tea, and Sage. And um, this brand is based on historical recipes from America's folk history. For instance, root is based on root tea which eventually evolved into root beer. Um, sage, or well, rhubarb tea is um, based on the fact that ben, ben Franklin brought rhubarb seeds to America in 1771 uh, for his friend John Bartram, who was the king's botanist and the father of American botany. And they made tea out of it. Um, and sage is based on the botanicals that Lewis and Clark brought back from their westward journey and gave to Thomas Jefferson and he made a garden, colonial garden gin, which is basically gin without juniper. Um, and oh, you can't see it. I don't know if you can. But my new one, it's called Dirt, D-U-R-T. And this is my attempt at doing a flavored vodka. Only it's not flavored, it's infused with things kids love. Uh, um, parsnips, <laughs> portobello mushrooms, um, beets, and sea lettuce. And it's called Dirt because it tastes like a uh, dirty martini. Um, and this is coming out in October, world premiere. No one else has seen this yet. Um, OK, so the brand is named Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction after the seminal 1936 essay by Walter Benjamin, or Benjamin if you're a nerd. Um, and the essay states, more or less, that the more art is reproduced, um, the more it loses its aura and its, its power and its magic. So um, 
Yeah. So I took that and changed uh, and apply that to the culture at large. And I said, the more we as people buy cheap crap from Walmart and Target, um, the more we buy stuff from sweatshops from China or Bangladesh, the more we live in obese McMansions and drive obese SUVs and get obese by drinking chemically flavored kitty vodkas, the more we as people lose our aura. Um, and the more we as a culture lose our aura. So Art in the Age is USDA organically certified. And as I mentioned before, it's, it's um, based on stories from authentic American folk history. I actually had to open a book to, uh, to learn about these things, as opposed to the kitty vodka guy who just poured some Fruit Loops into a bowl. Um, <laughs> and to me, the most important aspect of this is it supports small American family farms, um, both in the ingredients that we buy from them, but also starting this year, we're giving back a portion of each bottle we sell to the American Farmland Trust, which supports family farms. Um, so to my surprise, delight, and utter conf like bemusement, I can't believe this brand's doing really well. Um, in fact, it is growing at a faster rate in its first three years than both Sailor Jerry and Hendrix did. So it got me thinking that if I can distill something as obscure and abstract as Walter Benjamin in, in, into a bottle, then that means integrity is indeed the new luxury. Um, and I got to thinking, where else could I go with this? How, else, how could I take this further than what I'm doing now? And the answer lies with these guys, uh, the New England transcendentalists, um, Emerson, Thoreau, Whitman, and Bronson Alcott. Uh, the Transcendentalists were, uh, it was, it was America's first great philosophical movement starting in the 1830s. Um, and they believed, in a nutshell, that the coming Industrial Revolution was going to destroy America's um, pastoral, agrarian lifestyle. And they were right, because it did. Um, they also believed in this, something they called the sublime, which was the awesome, terrifying, power of nature. Uh, in an, they, they, at the heart of it, they were romantics who rejected the rigid, um, godless confines of the uh, Enlightenment in favor of the mystical, the magical, uh, the divine God. Um, and they felt that the way to get close to God was to commune with nature and be part of nature. So uh, I thought, aha, I'm going to um, build a transcendental, sublime, uh, agrarian distillery in the wilderness and be like the transcendentalists. Um, but you might be asking, can spirits be sublime? And the answer would be yes. Um, the, if you look at the root of the word spirits, it comes from the alchemists who believed that through transmutation they could um, uh, distill the essence, the life force, and the spirit of the plant into liquid form. Um, so if you, if you think about it, if spirits are made with integrity, um, they are truly, uh, you're drinking the life energy of the, of the, of the plant. Uh, you're partaking it into your own body. So, um, which doesn't really happen with the um, kitty flavored vodkas. Um, so, uh, where to build this utopian agrarian distillery in the wilderness? Well, the transcendentalists actually tried to build their own utopian community um, called Fruitlands in 1840 outside of Concord, uh, Massachusetts. And um, it failed. Uh, they almost starved to death because they spent too much time philosophizing and not enough time actually uh, working. So um, my first thought was to go there and to, um, to build it close to there so I could be as authentic as possible. However, unfortunately, because um, of its proximity to Boston, uh, it now kind of looks like this around that area, so, um, which it looks like around here, too. Um, so I did further research, <clears throat> and I, I actually looked through Thoreau's journals and came across a town called Tamworth. Um, 
that he wrote about in 1858 along the banks of the Swift River. Um, uh, Tamworth is in uh, White Mountains of New Hampshire. Um, and it is, I don't know, when I went there, it's hard to see that, but it's, it's, to my surprise and astonishment, it's pretty much the way Thoreau must have seen it in 1858. The town's virtually unchanged. Um, it's beautiful, it's bucolic, it's ideal. Um, also, what's really interesting about Tamworth is it's, it's, uh, the White Mountains are granite, and you can't frack in granite. And the, what you need to do to make really good uh, spirits is you need really good water. Tamworth sits upon the uh, most purest aquifer in, um, on the East Coast, and, uh, and you can't frack there. And I, can't, I couldn't build this in Pennsylvania or around here, that's for sure, because your water's going to shit. Because um, the oil companies. And um, so that's why I'm building this in New Hampshire. So decided this was the ideal place to go, so I started buying things up. Um, I bought the general store. I bought the inn, the Tamworth Inn. Um, and I bought a farm. A farm with a bowling alley. <laughs> so uh, yes, I am an aspiring robber baron. There will be blood. Um, but what I didn't do, this is the farmhouse, what I didn't do, uh, which I probably should have, is I forgot to tell the people in the town who I was, what I was doing, and why I was buying up their village. So they Googled me. And I probably should have mentioned, but before I made booze, I was into boobs. <laughs> um, I used to make movies uh, called Bikini Bandits. And it's a pretty descriptive title. It's about girls in bikinis who are bandits. Um, I made a feature film that actually stars uh, Corey Feldman and Dee Dee Ramone and Gary the Retard in the same movie. Um, it's a cult classic. Underappreciated, but it's a cult classic, I'm telling you. <laughs> Needless to say, this caused a uh, lot of concern in the village of Tamworth, where I think the average age is 80. Um, <laughs> No one takes their tops off in these movies, but to them, I'm a pornographer. Um, but, so this caused a delay, nearly two years of town meetings. Um, but now, I got everyone on board, everyone is down with a vision, everyone wants to make transcendental, sublime spirits in their town because they understand how, how it's gonna uh, support local ag agriculture and bring positive tourism to their town. Um, so now, it's really weird, the timing of this thing, because we just broke ground on this thing yesterday. After two years of waiting, after two years of talking to the National Historic Trust, the, uh, the Tamworth Historical Society, and every single town member, um, we have started breaking ground on this thing yesterday. And with any, uh, it's going to be a beautiful building. The, um, this part up here is the old part of the end that we're saving. This is the new structure. Um, with any luck, we will be uh, ready uh, we'll be finished by uh, spring and actually making uh, spirits. I don't know if they'll be transcendental or sublime by summer, but we're going to work on it. Um, and we'll be ready to go by summer of next year. And in the state of New Hampshire, if you distill on site, you can sell on site. So there'll be a, a place where people can come and sample and drink uh, and buy. And um, we're also making a... Um, a sizable investment in, in building a perfumery and a botan botanical laboratory. Um, like the alchemists, we're going to go full bore into experimenting with, um, with uh, the transmutation of the life force of botanicals into tinctures, bitters, uh, essential oils, and all sorts of things. Um, needless to say, all the ingredients will be coming directly from my farm and also surrounding farmers. Every farmer in the area is excited about this. Uh, we will be um, also, OK, we're also going to be doing, um, I really want to boldly go where no other distiller has gone before and do a lot of foraging in the, um, in the forest and 
see what happens when you distill things like uh, wild mushrooms, um, uh, wildflowers, moss, tree barks. Um, I even want to fool around with this. Um, what happens when you distill moose, moose crap? I don't know. You don't, hey, don't knock it till you try it. I haven't tried it yet. Um, the part of the end that I've uh, painstakingly preserved will be turned into a farm-to-table gastropub. Um, the part of the uh, barn in the back, which we are painstakingly preserving, will be turned into a barrel house to age our whiskey. So the question remains, if I build it, will they come? Will you come? Um, will people spend a uh, sizable you know, increase in, in money to buy spirits that were made up with integrity, that are transcendental and sublime? I sure as hell hope so, because I'm spending a fortune on this. Um, and if they don't, I'll be back in the barn getting drunk on moose crap.